Well hello there everybody and welcome to today's video. In this one I'm going to be showing you how to do 10 waves of armadillo call to arms, the Halloween call to arms mode, which is currently paying out 2 gold and like $530 for 10 waves. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do each wave, what spawns in each wave, general tips for staying alive in this. Uh, I found a really nice cheesy spot up on a rooftop as well which makes this very easy on solo. A couple of things to watch out for but I'll go uh, into that with every wave. Um, yeah, I, I managed to get lucky, I managed to get into a solo for this. Um, which really helped with the video, but you can do this with other people. Um, stick with this tactic. They do whatever they like. As long as you follow the, the rules, um, advice in this video, whatever, then you will get through it. You'll get your reward. You'll look like a badass at the uh, end of it, okay? So let's get into the video. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do for this is make sure that you're stocked up on ammo. Um, the weapon I brought with me was an Evans repeater, and I actually... Um, put a varmint rifle on the other thing I didn't really re realize um, but there is um, other rifles you can pick up in the mode so I didn't bring my rolling block but I would recommend a rolling block um, also a couple of pistols maybe a revolver um, make sure that you are stocked up on ammo though I know I've got the pouches for more ammo but I'm going to show you how to pick up plenty as you go along anyway so just make sure you visit the post click or the um, camp block box stock up on your ammos uh, before you go in and of course make sure you visit a fence as well stock up on dynamite and fire bottles you're definitely going to be wanting them um, yeah especially if you haven't got explosive rounds um, so just make sure that you're getting all of these stocked up yeah fire bottles and dynamite fill up yeah um, if you can go to camp make volatile of each one then come back to the fence again that's a bonus but i just went in with a handful of normal dynamite and fire bottles just like so okay so the next thing we want to talk about then is ability cards now this is the setup i use you don't necessarily have to use this but with the evans um the way uh, i'm going to show in the video paint it black is very useful especially it kind of mid to long range um, i didn't bring my sniper rifle with me it's much easier with a sniper rifle and obviously bring your own but paint it black is very useful um, in the video you'll see a lot of times i use paint it black for just a split second as i hit a headshot just for 100 percent accuracy with the evans okay that's why i'm saying bring loads of um, dead eye um, tonics and whatnot jolly jacks yeah, paint it black is very useful here. Um, slow and steady, I found um, the ancient tomahawks can still do a lot of damage with slow and steady. Um, and you're more likely to be hit while moving slow. So slow and steady is not going to be very good for you with this one. Paint it black is the way to go. Short game, there's going to be a lot of enemies close to medium range in this so deal much more damage to targets closer to you it's useful to have that one uh, for me once you take much less damage each consecutive time you shot so obviously you may take a few shots in a row on this for me once just make sure you're not going to take a load of damage from a load of successive shots really quick and then the unblinking eye is your dead eye and eagle eye drain much slower that's very useful goes well with paint it black um, yeah that's a nice little combo that's exactly what i used you can use whichever ones you like but for the purposes of this video that combo will be the best choice from from my recommendation anyway so okay let's start up the mode now we're equipped let's get into it so as the mode begins then as you can see i've gone in solo there um now i'm going to show you a very very nice roof this roof is going to be your best friend throughout this mode especially solo bearing in mind if you come in there's other players this is still the place i'd recommend this roof here i'm showing it on the screen right there it's the general store so if you know which one that is but right there you can see it it's the um building kind of in the middle of the south row now if you run around the back um, there is a way to get up just on this little uh, awning thing here and there's a little jump across to the other section and there you go up onto the roof now that little jump across that section there prevents any enemies getting up onto this roof so no one can climb up on this roof yeah simple as that no hatchet enemies no heavy enemies nothing um, and as you can see um, as standard in armadillo on this roof um, there's not usually um, an extra set of crates along the back there so you've got extra cover there's only a few places you can be shot from on this roof you see and all of them are quite easy to cover so that's the place you want to be for this okay so where we are then at wave one um, just basic enemies for this one hatchets um, and weak guns 
um, yeah, the allies will take care of most of these. Um, what I'm really trying to show you in this is just that paint it black headshot thing that I do, like a snapshot with uh, paint it black. Like I say, you don't necessarily need paint it black, but it's very useful. If not, just take them out normally. Just wanted to show that as to why I picked them ability cards. Makes this a lot easier. Um, yeah, let's get straight on to wave two. So here we are then at wave two. It's just like wave one, same basic enemies, just more of them. Um, yeah, just a few little highlights from wave two. Nothing really to shout about. Don't really have to stay in cover or anything like that. Just kind of aim free. Yeah, um, but a good thing to remember on this is that um, obviously, especially if you haven't got the expanded ammo pouches, um, once the wave's finished, it's quite easy to drop down, just get a few of the ammo boxes um, and then get back on that roof ready for wave three. So in wave three then, once again, more of the same um, hatchets, uh, weak guns. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep this one as short as possible for time's sake. Just remember after each wave, keep hopping down, emptying them ammo boxes and before you know it, um, you'll be at wave four. Here we are then on wave four. For this one, we have basic enemies, you know, the gun enemies, the machete enemies. Um, we also have passenger wagons, nothing really to worry about. They'll just roll up, drop enemies off. You can shoot the drivers as well. It's all good. Um, but the ones to really watch out for on this is the tomahawk throwers. These are going to be a pest from now on. I'm just going to take a little bit of time to explain this real quick. Um, this was my second attempt at recording this run. Uh, in my first attempt, I literally got one-shotted on wave five by a tomahawk thrower. And yes, I did have a gold core and a gold health bar, and I got one-shotted. It must have hit me in the face. Now, I did get hit several times in this run with tomahawks, but I didn't die, luckily. So just be very careful of them tomahawks. If you are facing down one of these guys, make sure you're stepping left and right. I'll even include a little funny bit in this where basically I'm just sat there and you can see all the tomahawks that have hit the roof. Any one of them is potentially a one-hit kill. So just make sure you're not exposing yourself to these guys. I'm not kidding. that They are potentially one-shot one kill enemies. Just be very careful around them. Okay, I can't stress that enough. Okay, but with the right technique, just don't expose yourself too much and you'll get through it just fine. Okay, just carry on as normal. Nothing too much. Just beware of them tomahawk throwers, okay? Now at this point, um, towards the end of pretty much every wave, there'll be this congealed mass of hatchet guys that are underneath the building. All you need to do is hop down from the awnings, run a direction away from them, just deal with them. They don't throw anything, just um, yeah, easy to kill. Um, you can lead them on a merry goose chase, you can outrun them when you sprint, so you can use that time to collect more ammo if needed. But otherwise, just deal with them, move on to the next wave, okay? So here we are then on to wave five. For this one, we've got the same basic enemies, passenger wagons and the tomahawk throwers, but also we have snipers. Now, an easy way to detect if you're in the scope of a sniper, you'll get your controller vibrate if you're on controller. Um, if not, you'll see a little white blip on the mini map. You'll also hear the heartbeat sound as well, like a mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That's the best impression I can do with that. Um, so yeah, look out for a little glimmer in the distance somewhere and that'll be like the reflection from the scope um, so they're quite easy to spot yeah they're, they're kind of lit up at distance so deal with them when you got the time um, it'll only be kind of like that westward point in view where you can be shot by snipers everywhere else you've got the three sides of cover if you crouch so don't worry too much just deal with the snipers when you get a chance but other than that it's it's straightforward once again just beware of the tomahawk throwers can't stress that enough okay so here's wave six starting up then. On this, it's the same enemies as wave five, just more of them. You've got 54 to get through on wave six. Um, yeah, just more of the same. Just um, follow the same steps as in wave five. The enemies might be a little bit more aggressive or spawn in larger numbers, but just stay in cover. Just keep picking them off one by one. Keep safe. And uh, yeah, dodge the tomahawk throwers, of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now's a perfect time to explain that at the end of most waves now, you will have a sniper or a war wagon in later waves remaining, which won't move. So use this opportunity to come down off the roof with just one enemy remaining. Gather up as many ammo boxes as you can. Um, yeah, make sure you're stocking up on ammo because you will burn through it on solo. So just make sure you get as much ammo as you can. Deal with a sniper. Get back to the roof as quick as possible, okay? So here we are then at wave seven. Now on this, we have two new enemy types to watch out for. We have the war wagon 
and we have the armoured guy. So firstly, the war wagon will appear on the minimap. Um, if it goes far enough away or you haven't got eyes on it, it will disappear off the minimap. So just make sure you know where it is. Once it's parked up, it doesn't move. So um, an easy way of taking that out is to snipe the guy on the Gatling gun. Really easy or use your paint it black. Literally one bullet can disable the war wagon and it just drives away. Um, you can also fire bottle the turret. Um, you can also throw dynamite at it. But the simplest way is to just snipe the guy on the Gatling gun. Simple as that. Once it's parked up, um, yeah, deal with it. Um, if it comes from the west, deal with it immediately because it's not going to leave you alone. Okay, But anywhere else, it's not going to bother you. The other enemy type on this is the armoured guy. The dot on the minimap will be slightly bigger. Just watch out for this guy. Um, his shots do actually stun lock you as well. Um, but the closest he can actually get is the roof just to the west. So just keep an eye on where he is. If he's out in the open, get your dynamite ready. Just start lobbing dynamite at the guy. It takes maybe two or three dynamite. Um, if you've got your explosive rounds, if you want to use them this early, feel free. But it is better to save them for later waves just in case he does get on the other roof and you need to deal with him. But dynamite the guy is really easy. Don't waste your ammo on him because it'll take too long to kill. It'll, it'll just soak up your ammo. Yeah, it, it's a waste of time doing that. Other than that, it's the same enemies. Just keep an eye out for the war wagon, where that goes, and the armoured guy. You know, it's it's still fairly straightforward. Just stay in cover, use all the tips and tricks you've learnt so far. You'll get through this no problem, okay? Remember also, when you're down to the last enemy, um, it's probably going to be a sniper. Just go around, get all the ammo, pick up dynamite, things like that. You're going to need them for these armoured guys uh, coming up, okay? Okay then, so on to wave 8. Now, um, in the footage, obviously, as soon as the wave starts, you can see this war wagon come in. Um, and obviously, that needs dealing with right away. Snipe the driver, throw a dynamite, dead eye the guy. You know, you only need to kill the guy, like I mentioned in the wave before. But the good news is, if you've done wave 7, you can do any wave. Because wave 8 is just more of the same. Um, each wave from now on will be one extra war wagon, one extra armoured guy. So, as long as you know how to deal with them, you're not going to have many problems from now on. Just remember to keep dropping down, um, getting your ammo in between waves, uh, giving the guy the run around at the end as well. And um, yeah, let's move on to wave 9 rather swiftly then. So here we are then, wave 9. And on this wave, we have three war wagons, three armoured guys, and a whole slew of the other enemies as well. Once again, watch out for the tomahawk throwers. Uh, they can be particularly nasty. Um, I have heard stories of people dying on wave 10 to a single tomahawk thrower. Um, so just be careful of that. Um, I know I keep saying that, but you know I've had the same experience myself on the first attempt. So... Um, yeah, just use all the tips and tricks as mentioned before. You should have been running around getting all the ammo, dynamite, everything. Um, just use every trick up your sleeve that you've learnt so far. You'll get through this no problem at all. Just showing bits and bobs of footage, dealing with the armoured guys, war wagons, whatever, in no particular order. But yeah, it's it'll take a little bit of time to get through this on your own. Maybe 15 minutes, wave 9. I'm not kidding, wave 9 and wave 10 do take a bit of time. You've obviously got 74 enemies to deal with, but just keep in cover, keep tonicking up, keep using your dead eye on them. You know, you'll, you'll be through this in no time, okay? And then let's move on. And here we are then at wave 10. Ba, 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 ba. Um, yeah, on this, more of the same. I know I'm saying this now. Um, that's why wave 7 um, was a bit long, just explaining everything to kind of put the measures in place for wave 8, 9 and 10. On this one, you've got the same, but there's four war wagons, four armoured guys, and the war wagons seem to spawn in pairs as well, so just be careful of that. Um, in this run, I did actually manage to take out a war wagon with a fire bottle to the turret, so that's a viable tactic if you're running low on dynamite, you want to save it for the heavy guys. Yeah, just keep on like you've done. Um, if you've done wave 7, 8, 9, wave 10 is not going to be an issue. There's only a few extra enemies. Um, probably another 15 minutes you'll spend doing this. Uh, maybe 20 on wave 10. This is the longest part of it. But, you know, just keep grinding through them enemies. Keep knocking them down. And like I say, before you know it, you'll be at that end screen. You know what I mean? So... Here's just a selection of clips as I'm talking, of taking things out, snipers, heavy guys, war wagons, you know, the whole lot. This is just what you can expect from this, but 
stay in cover, deal with them when you're safe, tonic up. You should have no issue with this. You should have no issue. You know what I mean? Tomahawk, guys. Be careful. But other than that, this is this is a cinch. It's so easy to complete this. Just incredibly easy. You know, two gold bars for you once you've got this done. Okay, so, yeah. Let's uh, move on then to completion. Here it is. There you have it, everybody. The solo guide for the Halloween Armadillo Call to Arms. Two gold bars, $530. Like I say, if you join um, and people are in with you, it's fine. That'll speed things up. It doesn't matter if they all die right away or they help you out. If you want to stay on this roof, you can complete this all the way through up on this roof. No problem. If you go in a session on your own, don't even sweat it. Get on this roof, you know what I mean, nice and easy. Kind of, I'd say this in total, as I look back through the recording, took me... Um, an hour and a half on my own. You can do this in an hour with two people, three people, probably less. Uh, if you've got a couple of people sweeping or on other roofs and things like that, it will help with more people, don't get me wrong. But if you want to do this on your own and you get in on your own, there it is. It's more than possible. So um, I know I don't say this often enough, but please, if you've enjoyed this video and it helps, feel free to subscribe. You know what I mean? I'm going to be putting out more Red Dead Online and Jurassic World Evolution 2 stuff very, very soon. I know I cover two games at the minute, but that's all good. You're all liking both, so trying to keep everybody happy. Um, just want to say thank you all for watching. Um, all the best, and I'll catch you all again very, very soon. Take it easy, everybody. Have a great day. All the best. Bye-bye.